What is going on? My name is John Gab, and I help entrepreneurs master their mindset. And in today's video, I'm going to be sharing with you the biggest lesson I've learned from the $100 million man, Alex Hormozzi. Okay, so I've been studying Alex Hormozzi now every day for pretty much the past three months. And when I say every day, I mean every day, 30 minutes minimum. I read his book on Kindle. I listened to the audiobook and recently I had to get the hardcover because this book is truly incredible and there's so much value in there. I will, I will continue to study this. But not just have I studied his book, I've really been just absorbing all of his interviews and all of his content out there online. And from that, I've pieced together kind of the nuances you might miss if you just maybe was to watch one video of his or read his book once. And in this video, I want to share with you the biggest lesson I've taken away from Alex that I believe combines all of his kind of principles and lessons together, okay? So let's jump straight into it. The biggest concept I learned from Alex was this, right? He says, there's three traits entrepreneurs need to basically get to the next level or to achieve any kind of level. And the first one is skill set. The second one is character traits. And the third one is their beliefs, okay? So the skill set is we don't know how to do what we need to do, okay? So uh, maybe you start off a business, right? And you don't know how to acquire customers, so you need to develop that skill set, okay? Then you acquire that skill set of getting customers, but then you need to learn the skill set of how to sell them, okay? So as you level up, you need to acquire a new skill set. Then as maybe you grow, you know, you grow your business, then you need to build out a sales team, another skill set you would need to acquire. The second one is your character traits. So maybe at the beginning of your entrepreneur journey, maybe you're not disciplined, right? Maybe you are just lacking focus. So your character trait would then be, okay, I need to become disciplined. I need to become more focused. I need to become more consistent. And then once you develop that skill set, then you might need to develop the character trait of being more decisive, okay? As you become higher up leader in your business. Then we move on to beliefs, okay? The beliefs are we don't believe what we need to believe. Okay, and again, let me just rephrase what character is. We don't know how to be who we need to be. Okay, and then the belief is we don't believe what we need to believe. And there's a quote I heard Alex say in an interview, something along the lines of, we question all of our beliefs except the ones we don't question or we don't think to question. I completely butchered that, but it was along those lines. So essentially, we don't question those beliefs we truly believe in and they just loop around in our subconscious mind and we keep getting results we don't want, right? And I wanna talk about just this one today, all right? Beliefs, specifically this. Because the thing is, skill sets we can easily acquire, right? You can get books like this for a couple dollars. That is gonna give you a lot of skills you need. The character traits, again, you can probably grow your business to a large amount, even if you have mediocre discipline and the character traits you would need yes it won't be as efficient and as easy to grow if you lack discipline consistency but you still will be able to get there but if your beliefs are off you ain't going to get there and i want to explain to you in this video why understanding what beliefs are is something i've really studied over the past year and i read a book which i highly recommend you guys check out called inner size by john Asaraf. and um on this book he really explained what beliefs are. And this is where I, I truly started to understand the power of belief. All right, so how do beliefs work, right? Beliefs are simply habits of thought. So just like a physical habit, let's say doing your teeth, thoughts can be habits too. It's a neural pattern in your brain and they cause us to view the world without thinking. And this is called automaticity. So basically what that is, let me just show you the diagram. Imagine when you first learn a new habit, okay, or a belief or a behavior, or a thought that you have. When you're first learning it, your brain is active and thinking about the thing going on, right? So it's like, cool, um, let me learn to drive a car. You have to consciously think about driving the car, moving the steering wheel, reversing the car, going forward in the car. But then over time and repetition, your brain shuts down and it doesn't need to think about what it's doing. It's automatic, automaticity, right? And the same is true with your beliefs. You hear a belief and you accept it and then your brain just shuts down. It doesn't question it. It just accepts it as truth. Understand this right now. 
your brain will accept it as truth. And there's a quote I heard, and this is so powerful, right? The simple truth is that our beliefs are not true in themselves. They become true in our experience if we believe them. So again, if you believe, and I'm going to give you an example in a moment from one of our students, but if you believe something is true, you will make that a reality in your life because you are always want to align with what you believe is true. So what's crazy about beliefs is that they can be imagined. A lot of them are not even true. You just believe them to be, be true. And once a belief is formed, your brain looks for more evidence to support your belief. Confirmation bias, right? So again, a lot of the time, again, like I said, when we're first born, we have two beliefs or two kind of main fears. One is the fear of falling over and the two is the fear of loud noises. So every belief we have is learned through society, through our parents, school, YouTube videos like this one here, and they form our belief. And why this is so important is because beliefs, write this one down, right? Beliefs drive behavior, okay? And this becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy. So a belief about the future, action taken because of having the belief, results of those actions confirm the original belief, and then that reinstates the belief. This is true, we keep acting in that way. All right, so let's take an example. Maybe you say, oh, I find it hard to focus. So then you go into your work, you believe you can't focus, so you don't focus. And then you look back and go, I can't focus. I guess it's true. And then you don't focus again and you look back at the evidence and it keeps on looping around and around. And this is why beliefs drive behavior. And going back to the original point of this whole video, when Alex is talking about this, the beliefs he has, right? He probably has beliefs. And something I observed from Alex was, he felt comfortable charging high ticket for his programs. At the beginning, when I was first doing this, I felt weird doing that because I believed people didn't have money because I didn't have money, right? I used to work in a supermarket. Once I had £4.20 in my bank account. So I had this perception that charging high amounts of money is bad because I don't have the money, all right? And then I heard Alex was talking about he used to work in a company where they would charge loads of money for their service. It was normal. And the other thing he was saying was along the lines of, you know, let's say, for example, somebody is going to pay for a service. Now, let's say somebody who's making a million dollars a year versus somebody making a thousand dollars in a month, right? Or a thousand, let's say ten thousand dollars a year. They, the person making a million will be a lot more open to spending $5,000 on a service versus somebody making $10,000 a year on a service, right? And as I've increased my income, I've been more and more open to spend larger and larger amounts on my self-education and products and things that will help me level up. But my belief was people don't want to spend that money. But as I've shifted my paradigm and I've started to question it, I've realized people will. So again, you can see how a belief can drive a behavior and slow you down from attaining the things you want in your life. So Let's continue. Here's an example of one of our students inside Mindpreneur. It's a coaching program we run, right? For helping entrepreneurs master their mindset. And I said to him, you know, what's a belief that doesn't serve you? He says, being successful takes a long time. So I said to him, define success, right? First of all, we need to define what the thing is you want or the belief you have. What does that actually mean? And he said, success is $100,000 per month. Okay, I said, define a long time, 10 years. So I said, is, is, is it taking you a long time to achieve your goal? He said, yes. All right, so his results are slower than the average person, is what he was saying, right? And I said, do you think you are successful yet? And he said, no. So then I said, so if I give you $100,000 right now, are you successful? He says, no. So you can see how this one belief is preventing them from succeeding because they almost believe being successful will take a long time and being successful means I have money. I have $100,000 per month. But then if I say to them, if I give you that money now, do you feel successful? They say no. So that's not the thing that's going to make them feel successful or be successful, quote unquote. And on top of that, you will put that on a pedestal. So again, it will take you longer to be successful if you believe that. But what if he believed being successful is easy? Being successful can happen fast, right? Right? That's how we can frame it. So now how do we actually change beliefs, right? Number one, you want to discover beliefs that do not serve you. So for example, there for our student is like being successful takes a long time. What would the opposite of this belief be that would serve you? 
So being successful can happen fast. Imagine, let's just keep it simple. That could be the belief he wants. So you write down the belief and read over it to reprogram your mind to believe it and then it will back it up with evidence. Again, it doesn't matter if it's true or not. It's just the belief that you will believe in. So if you believe being successful takes a long time, you will find ways to make it being successful a long time. But if you believe success comes easy, right, and it happens fast, you will find ways to make that happen. So again, let's say for example, you could believe growing your business takes a long time and you want to believe growing a business is easy and fast, but you won't believe that because you have a bias towards the first belief and the evidence to back that up. But if you start backing up your new belief with evidence, your mind will start to believe that because <clears throat> you need evidence to back up the belief, right? So for example, if you start saying to yourself, imagine you right now have the belief, growing my business is hard, right? Growing a business is easy and here's why. Because I have seen Alex Omozi grow gym launch business to 200K per month in the first month and generate $120 million in 24 months. So now your brain has evidence. Your brain has proof that, hold, hold on, hold on, somebody set up a business and made 120 million in 24 months, right? Another one could be, you know, in the agency space, which is what we're in. I only need to email 1,000 businesses a month, 250 companies a week, 50 a day, which will only take me two hours of work a day, which could equate to me making $10,000 a month, right? Now, in a month, if you send 1,000 emails and you get to $10,000 per month, let's just say theoretically speaking, did that take you a long time to be successful? No, right? So you can see how now you start to question your beliefs that are not serving you. And then you start to back up, back up the ones you want with evidence. So you have a choice. You have the, the belief that doesn't serve you, right? Which is going to create the results you don't want. Or you believe the belief that does want to serve you. And that will get you the results you want. And you start to back that up. Again, you could say a belief could be, why, would, why is setting up a business hard? I can hire people to do the work for me, right? So these are just some examples here. And um, I'll leave you with this last point. One of my first students and my business partner, Vash, who I, run, who I run my entrepreneur with, I remember on one of our first coaching calls and he said, I've got a client and I'm worried that, you know, we're not going to get them the results and it's not going to last long or whatever it was, right? Just doubts and fears. And I said, look, Vash, we have two options right now. One is we have fear, all right? We can look at what's going to go wrong. We can look at what might not happen. We can look at the bad outcomes or we have faith. We can look at what can go right. We, we can look at how we can get them the best results and we can look at the good outcomes. And that's really what this comes down to with your beliefs. You have a choice, but which one will you believe? Which one are you going to lean into and let drive your behaviors? So I would recommend, you know, Take action on these steps here. Um, discover what beliefs do not serve you. What would be the opposite of the belief that would serve you? And then write this belief down and read over it to reprogram your mind to believe it and back it up with evidence. And overall, this is the biggest lesson I've learned from Alex Hormozzi because if you learn all the skills, you have the character traits, but you have beliefs that don't serve you, it's almost like you're driving a car with your foot on the brake. It's just going to take you a lot longer to get there and from my experience and from observing other people who I've coached, when you do attain the goal, most likely you're either going to sabotage it or you're still going to feel like shit when you get it because you have this belief that like, I'm not deserving of this or this is, too, this is too good to be true or whatever it might be. So really just ask yourself, like, what beliefs do I want? What beliefs will serve me in getting to the next level? And as, I'm, as I level up and get to the next level in my life, I always ask myself, all right, what do I need to do? But then I say, what beliefs do I need to have to get to that next level? And then I write them down and I read over them. So I hope you found this video valuable. If you wanna know more about how we can help you master your mindset, there's actually a free community with a free mindset course in the top link of the description. You can join that there. And also we do group coaching calls once a week where you can ask myself any questions you want around the mindset. I'll see you inside the community. Have an incredible day. Thank you for watching and make sure you subscribe. See you in the next video.